What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today we're back on the lake for another uncut offshore fishing video. We're not going live this time because of the cell signal issues on this lake, but I'm just going to post this as a regular video and show you two to three hours of me finding and hopefully catching some fish offshore. These Fish the Moment uncut offshore videos are brought to you by Bridgeford Foods. Big shout out to Bridgeford for sponsoring Fish the Moment and allowing us to make these videos and bring them to you. Definitely check out some Bridgeford beef jerky at your local Walmarts, gas stations, and dollar stores. Again, thanks to Bridgeford. Okay, let's jump into it, guys. So today I'm on a pretty small lake. If I pull up my chart, it's not a massive lake, and it's also a lake that has no contour lines on it. Now I do have live marks out here. It's a lake I've fished quite a bit over the years, so it's not like I'm completely unfamiliar with the lake. But what I like to do whenever I get to a lake, even if I'm very familiar with it, is to spend some time graphing in areas that I'm not that familiar with. A lot of times when you get to the lake, you can get tunnel vision and feel like you have to go fish areas where you've caught fish before, where traditionally the fish live. And when you do that, a lot of times you miss opportunities to catch fish in new areas or unique situations. So even though I know this lake really well and I know where a bunch of brush piles and road beds and all this stuff are, I'm basically going to just graph around here without looking at any waypoints to give myself an idea of what's generally happening. Now, when I get to the lake, there's two or three things I try to identify right away. One, I'm trying to determine the depth of the fish. Two, I'm gonna to try to determine the primary forage that the bass are feeding on. And three, I need to figure out the types of structure and cover that they're around. Now, to determine the depth of the fish, really the best way to do that is just to start seeing some fish on the fish finder. Are most of the fish setting up in 15 feet of water, 10 feet of water, five feet of water, things like that. I also need to get a general sense of the cover that's in the lake. Right now we have a lot of grass that's actually in this lake. And I also need to get a sense for the general structure we have going on. I'm basically just zigzagging out here in the open, not doing anything crazy, but you can see that there are actually a handful of fish that are setting up on the 2D sonar, mixed in with some of this grass. There's some grass and there's some fish, and this grass is sticking out pretty deep into the middle of the lake. I mean, it's out here in nine to 12 feet of water, which is really interesting. Normally, I don't see that much grass growing out in this lake, and that could be a player for sure, I'm not going to make any decisions right off the bat. I'm also not necessarily seeing any specific bait fish or like fry or bluegill just off the bat here, but that doesn't mean they're not out here. Now, when I'm graphing around offshore grass like this, you're going to have a hard time seeing exactly what's happening on the bottom because there's a lot of grass that gets in the way of your image. So I'm not gonna be able to determine fully if there are a bunch of fish in this grass just by graphing with my down imaging in 2D. I am seeing a couple of isolated dots here on my down imaging. If you switch over to this view, you can see that there is an isolated fish right, I'll pause this, make this full screen. Right about here, there's one dot right there, right there. And I'll move away so you guys can see that. There is a fish right there and it doesn't look like a very big one but there's also a few more potential fish that I kind of graphed earlier that may be in that little patch. Again, I'm not seeing anything that jumps off the screen right off this minute. I'm not seeing like a pile of fish or a bunch of bait. So I'm gonna kind of keep in mind that I saw a couple of dots out here in that like 15 foot of water on the edge of that grass and I'll at least keep that in mind. But I'm not going to stop before I know for sure I'm dealing with a group of fish and hopefully that'll be pretty apparent on the screen here. Now, we got something interesting here. We got on the side imaging, a really nice break from an old road. And you can see that there's grass right on that break of that edge. That is a great spot for bass to group up this time of year. And you can see there's actually a little ditch or a drain that's coming up on the side imaging too. Really good looking stuff. Not necessarily seeing a pile of fish or anything around, but that doesn't mean too much because it could just be balled up in that grass. But just again, trying to get a general sense, I might come back and recheck that area, refish it, depends. Uh, if I start finding fish in the same depth zone, you can see some nice rock cover out to the right of the boat. On side imaging, we have another little kind of random cut in, which is kind of interesting. To the left side of the boat, kind of like an old road bed that runs out here. I'm gonna spin the boat kind of hard because I know it gets a little bit shallower here and I actually see some grass up ahead of me and I'm just gonna make a kind of hard cut right through here. You can see that there's a bunch of grass right on the edge and there may actually be a couple of fish potentially on that down imaging 
that I saw. We're now kind of up in the grass. That's a nice little drop right there. That's a nice little hard edge. I'm actually gonna mark that just in case because that does look pretty interesting. I'm not going to get too worried about it, but I'm gonna mark that with a grass symbol just so I know that's the edge of some interesting grass. On that hard drop, there's some potential few fish right there. So we're gonna keep looking at that. Again, I'm not getting too excited and just jumping up and fishing right away. That's one of the mistakes I see a lot of anglers make. Let me make sure everything's recording here, we're still good. Uh, a, lot of, a very common mistake I see anglers make is they just jump up and start fishing right off the bat whenever they see anything interesting. The first drop off with grass, the first potential fish. And a lot of times this can be a very big mistake because you miss some obvious areas that are even more loaded or they're a lot better than what you first saw. Most of the time, the first spot you pull up on is not going to be the best spot in the lake. There are times when that does happen, but that's usually more of the uh, exception versus the rule. Now we do have a really nice little like brushy deal right there. Not seeing any big fish on the 2D. There are a couple of fish down there on the down imaging, but those are probably just like one to two pound fish, which we're not super interested in. And really, again, I'm just making zigzags around the lake. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just literally driving around in a circle, almost, and just zigzagging through. We have maybe a few more fish right there. If we look at that, that actually looks kind of interesting. We have a little bit of scattered grass, and there are a handful of potential more arches further up on this thing. That does look kind of interesting right in there. It may just be some smaller bait fish in that grass too. I'm gonna keep graphing. You can see that hard edge of that drop or that road bed on the right side of the side imaging. That is a nice little deal. Just trying to follow that edge. And then we got some grass sticking up there. A little depression right there. Potentially a fish or two as well. That all looks really promising right there. And you can see it just that little edge keeps going out to the right and then there's some brush and stuff out here I'm gonna keep circling I'm gonna kind of recircle this because I'm now starting to see a little bit of activity a little bit of bait fish potentially on the down imaging this looks like it might be a little bit more promising because we're actually seeing some bait fish out here kind of in the open we actually just saw a little bit more bait as well now we're starting to get an area where we can see the bait fish there on the 2d sonar is in that like 10 foot range. So we're kind of getting a sense, okay, most of these fish look like they're stacking up right there, kind of in this area right here in like that 10 foot of water zone. So that gives us at least a sense that, okay, maybe these fish are setting up in that 10 foot zone. Now, if we can find some structure that tops out in 10 foot with some good cover, like the grass that's on the edge of this road could be a good deal. Now, this is an area where I've caught them before, so I'm not gonna say I haven't caught them here. I know that this spot does hold fish, but I'm not going to just immediately go here and just start fishing if you know I'm not seeing all the ingredients we need. Now that looks really freaking good right there. We have some grass on the edge of that. There are several fish that are setting up and it's right in the edge of that drop off, right in 10 foot. So if we pause this, you can see we have several fish that are stacked up on the 2D. We have a you can see them on the down imaging. There's some scattered grass that's out there as well. And we see another fish that's setting up kind of right in here on the 2D. We have a couple more fish right in here. This is all grass over here. Ooh, pause that, this is all grass over here. And then we have that nice sharp drop off. So I'm actually gonna mark this with a grass symbol. That looks really good. And I'm gonna now get up and I wanna make a handful of casts. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time on this. There was some bait out here. There's a few things that look kind of interesting. But I just want to make a handful of casts. If we start catching them right away, awesome. If not, not a big deal. We'll just keep moving on. But at least we've determined that that grass is in the depth zone of the bait, so it's in 10 foot of water. We've determined, and there's that little waypoint right there. We're going to kind of get lined up with my range ring here. And we're spin around and try to get on the other side of this. We've determined that there's some grass up there that's in the right depth range that we saw some bait. We saw a couple fish down there. So we have the depth of the fish. We have the depth of the cover. We have the structure in the right depth. Everything we need to potentially catch a fish. Does that mean we're going to catch a fish here? No, <laughs> but we're going to try. Let me switch over here to my live scope view. And uh, there we go. We're going to give it a shot. 
there are no guarantees in this game, guys. So we're just going to get up here. I'm going to kind of work my way up to this deal. You won't be able to see it because I have my graph connected to my backbone, but I'm going to line up on the spot with my waypoint here real quick. It's on my front graph. So we're getting lined up. I'm just going to make my way over to this deal. A little grassy stretch. We're going to work our way up here a little bit. We're pretty much lined up right on it. And then I'm going to kind of chill on this. And I'm going to throw a little hover rig over there. See if I can get some of these fish. It's They're sitting up not that deep. So I think I might be able to make the hover work. Let me see here. Got to find the top of that drop off right in there. Back us up just a little bit. Don't want to get too close on these. this thing. Oh, we're still kind of a good ways away. Okay, we're about 100 foot out. There's some scattered fish. You can see them there on the live scope, just about 40 feet out. The spot I marked is a little bit higher up there, but you can see there's just some scattered fish. They don't honestly look all that big. They're kind of just chilling out there. We, we're actually still a little bit deep. You can see we're still seeing out here in like that 16 foot zone. So I'll probably need to scoot up here just a little bit further. We want to have, we want to see those fish that are in that 10 to 12 foot zone, I think is probably the call. If I remember looking at the spot, right? I think that was kind of where we saw some of those fish. Yeah, you can see we're getting a little bit closer up there now in that 10 foot zone. It's kind of very the very end of my cast. So we're just creeping up there. There's some fish that are sitting out here deeper. They don't look very big. These might be just some crappie or something. They're out here. Let me make sure my settings are right. Okay, yeah, I got the right setting on. Okay, so there's definitely some Fish right there. There we go. Okay. Back us up just a little bit. Might be getting a tiny bit too close. I'm just working this hover rig. I'm going to try a couple different baits out here just to see if I can get these fish to react. There are definitely a handful of fish down kind of in that grassy area. You can see them down there on the uh, the live scope. Don't know if they're gonna be super active, if they're gonna be easy to catch. We're not gonna waste a ton of time on them though. I mean, if we don't get bit within the first, let's say 10 casts here, probably gonna move on. That's the cast right there though. I can see them all down there, chilling. There's quite a few of them. Something a little bit different down there that might get down in that grass a little bit better. Throw a little prototype hover rig that we got, a little bit heavier version. Haven't thrown this very much, so we're going to see if that works. So I have a Big Bite Baits BFE on here. Good bluegill imitator, going to just glide that thing down into this spot. This hover rig is actually a little bit heavier than the normal. It's a quarter ounce on a bigger hook. We're testing it out, seeing if it works. So you guys are gonna see if it works right here. We got nice calm conditions today. Uh, bluebird skies, so I mean, it's not like we're dealing with the best fishing conditions, but these fish should be setting up tighter to cover, like this grass. They're gonna be down there, and you can see that there are a handful of fish down there, so. Just nothing that makes me super excited. I'm not seeing big fish. I'm not seeing anything that's like really grouped up. There's just a handful of scattered fish that are just cruising around out here. A lot of times it's fun about finding that right cast. There's a little bit of a extra depression right there that's kind of interesting. There's some fish right there too. Let me cast that way a little bit further. I think there's a a little bit more of a depression 
that way. There's definitely some bluegill or something swimming around down there, and then I'm thinking there's probably some bass as well, just if I had to guess. About to find out. And if we don't get bit on this pretty fast, I mean, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on this deal because usually when you get in an area like this and they're in offshore grass or they're on any sort of offshore area, and especially because it's like the last couple days of May, these fish are just getting offshore. I don't expect that they're gonna be getting a lot of pressure. So I should be able to get these fish to bite right away if I get the right cast. I do wanna make sure at least I'm making a thorough sampling of this area. I don't wanna just work through it in five minutes and miss something, like miss a good cast. So I'm gonna to try to work it a little bit thoroughly, but not to the point where I'm soaking my bait down there. The There's a little grassy patch right there. And this grass is interesting because it's growing out here. There's not a ton of it, but these fish should be starting to use this. We might need to be going a little bit, we're pretty far off the bank right now. We might be able to catch some fish if we go further towards the kind of the, just the first outside edge of the grass versus way out here. This is kind of more of like a full on summertime deal. But if they're out here, you're gonna catch them really good. But I just worked that bait through there, made five or six casts. I think I covered that thing pretty thoroughly. So we're actually gonna put the rods up. We're gonna keep rolling. I don't like fishing spots for very long if I'm not getting bit because usually you get bit within your first, I don't know, I would say four to five casts on a good offshore area, you're gonna get bit really fast. So I don't waste time screwing around. There are fish there probably, and maybe it's a timing deal. Maybe if I got here first thing in the morning or if the wind picks up or something, those fish might get really active and I could catch them. But they're not active right now, so I'm not gonna waste a ton of time just soaking my bait. I'm gonna try to find some active fish. That's my goal. And we're just gonna keep rolling. So let's keep going here. Now, again, what I'm doing literally is I'm kind of following the edge of this lake here, and I'm not really, I don't know, I'm not really graphing anything crazy. I'm literally just driving around, like following the outside edge of the outside edge of this lake, trying to stay in that like 10 to 15 foot zone, because that's kind of where I saw the, the fish and the bait earlier. So I'm not going to get too concerned about whether I'm graphing a certain type of structure, a certain whatever. I'm just gonna put my boat in this like 10 to 15 foot zone and just start graphing and just go and see what I can see. Now, one deal that's tricky, especially when you get grass in a lake like this, is that these fish have a tendency to spread out more because there's more area for them to get in. Usually on a standard uh, lake without grass, the fish will group up more on like hard cover, hard structure, and there's not as much of it. With grass, there's a lot more stuff going on. So usually what you need to find is a combination of cover or a combination of structure. So finding hard rock mixed with the grass, find a brush pile on the outside edge of the grass, find uh, some stumps that are mixing with the grass, something that is a little bit different. Ooh, right there, that is, see that's interesting right there. Uh, that's actually really interesting. If we look at the side imaging, pull this up. You can actually see a handful of fish in the side imaging right here. If I zoom this up, you can see them right there. There's a hard break, this is a, a ledge or an edge, and then there's one, two, three dots that are sitting, setting up on the side imaging right on that edge. I'm gonna mark this as fish, and I'm gonna spin around. I don't wanna regraph that too much because it's right on the edge of some of this grass. There's like a grass edge, if I pause this again, like there's a grass edge right in here, and there's a deeper hole or a ditch. It comes up here to a, like a flatter spot, and then there's some fish right in the center there. That is pretty interesting. I don't know if you can see it because of all the stuff I have going on, but there's the fish right there. Right there, there's that outside edge, inside or outside edge of the grass, and that's like that extra little hump. That looks pretty spicy. So we're gonna roll over there and just make a couple casts. I'm not gonna try to fish everything I see, but the fact that there's some fish that are setting up there and we see them pretty clear that's very useful to at least know that there's some decent sized fish in the area. Um, 
We're gonna switch back over here. And those fish look like they're a little bit suspended. So we may have to go to a, something different than what we were throwing earlier. I don't know exactly what to throw today. Sometimes when I get out here, I don't know, I don't have like a perfect game plan on what to throw. So we're just gonna get lined up on this deal and we're gonna start with this heavier hover. I kind of like this deal. It imitates a bluegill, it kind of glides around. And then we may go to a tush here in a second and throw that around or something. I'm not really sure. But let's, let's see what's going on up here with the live scope. We're not quite up there yet. We're getting up towards that. We're kind of almost like I can hit the edge of that grass almost with a cast. And that drop off is like between that grass edge and here. It's kind of interesting. Now, I'm not seeing any fish swimming around. A lot of times you can see fish swimming in the grass on the live scope. There's a fish right there sitting on the outside edge. It's a decent fish too. I'm gonna try to get that. I'm gonna drop that hover right on his head. Dropped it right on his head. Oh, 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 is he gonna get it? Get it, fish. Oh, he had it too. Dang it. Oh, that was crazy. Is he swimming back over to it? He bumped that thing. Wow. I don't know what that is. It looks freaking good, whatever it was. It looked like a good fish. He smacked it. Let me uh, make sure we're going here. Yeah, you probably probably saw that. Let me get. I'm gonna get something else to throw down at him real quick. Cause that fish came up and he hit it. I mean, hit it. He's down there on the bottom now. There are some good fish just kind of cruising this outside edge, right where I kind of saw them. Man, that was a good one too. He, he's still right there. I mean, it's not like he's leaving. He's just chilling down there. That was like, that's a good one. Just suspended up just a little bit. Working a little prototype swim bait hook over here from Core Tackle. Trying to work this. I got this to work on Grand really well where I hopped it over the top of these fish. He is not interested. He liked that hover a lot more, it seemed like. That was crazy though, that he came up and hit that thing and then just missed it. These fish probably aren't feeding as much on shad as they are on the brim. It's probably why that shad imitating bait is not as effective. I might need to go, this bait, I feel like this bait isn't too big or anything. Um, he had the, I mean, he had it in his mouth this thing has a double cable guard, weed guard on it. That might be a little bit too much too. We might not, we might need to make some adjustments to the spade. Since this is in prototype, we might need to make some adjustments in terms of the hook, or the weed guard situation and everything like that. So uh, I don't know if this is the perfect solution <laughs> yet with this heavier hover rig, uh, especially because I just missed that fish, but that's why we're out here experimenting. I probably shouldn't be experimenting while I'm trying to do a video for you guys because it probably doesn't help my fish catching all that much, but I definitely found some fish here. There's chill, they're chilling right here. Scan over here as well, before I get drifting too far, just to make sure I'm not drifting up on any fish. 
so I can just focus on this little stretch I have here. There aren't that many fish I saw on the sides. Oh, there's some right there too. Oh, dang, okay. Get back off a little bit. Back us off. There's, there's like a little hole here, a little depression, and there's a handful of fish. This might not be the perfect bait for it. I have another bait I'm thinking about throwing down there actually here in a second. I'm gonna go to a smaller hover and I'm gonna put on Spotlocks here for a second. I'm gonna take off this bait. I have a little Nishin something or other. It's like a little leech or something. I'm gonna to go to a Striking Caffeine Shad. Four inch Striking Caffeine Shad Junior in a green pumpkin color. I think it's watermelon red actually. The watermelon red fluke on this eighth ounce hover rig. I'm gonna to try to just kind of hover this thing around in front of these fish around this grass. I think this might get that fish that I missed to actually commit. It'll fall a tiny bit slower. I mean, that, he had that bait in his mouth too. And also I know that I can get a good hookup ratio on this eighth ounce hover because we've tested it enough to know it's, it's good. But there we go, just a little core tackle eighth ounce hover rig. Watermelon red, Strike King Caffeine Shad Jr. Now let's try to get one of these fish to bite. You can see him about 60 feet in front of the screen. There's a handful of fish chilling. There's that good one that was over there still. I'm sure he's still over in that area, the one that hit earlier too. There's that little depression or hole we saw inside imaging, it's right there. And the fish, it seemed like, were right on that edge of that grass, right, right, oh, there he is, at the bottom down there, right on the edge of that thing, right where we saw him on the side scan. Where'd he go? He was popping on the bottom there for a second. There he is. 50 feet out. I don't know if I hit the cast. I don't think I hit the cast right. But we're just gonna kinda work it through this general area. There's this outside edge of this grass line and there's a handful of fish. Not a lot of fish though, just a few. Couple more right there, about 50, 60 feet out. In the 12 foot range. Sitting kind of tight to the bottom. Hmm. back over here for a second. I really wanted to see if I can just see one really clear as day and get a cast on him like that last one because that really seemed to be the deal on that fish. He got all over it. I mean, that was a that was a good one. I wish I would hook that fish because that was probably, from the look of it, there's one, the one right there, on the outside edge of that grass. Look, looked to me to be like a four or five pounder just based on the size of the return on the live scope. There we go. The hover's falling right in front of that fish. Is he gonna eat it? He didn't come after it. Oh, there's a couple of them, look at that. There's like three or four of them right there. Right on that outside edge. I can see the edge of the grass and you can see those handful of fish that are swimming. There's a really clear image right there of that fish. They're, they're just chilling on that outside edge. Bait's coming right by him, it has to be. Come on, fish. I threw right there on him. Hmm. 
That's really interesting. There are fish right here in front of the boat. There's a couple of fish in front of the boat. We're gonna try these grass fish for a bit, but I mean, these fish seem very inactive. If I had to use a term for it, they do not seem like they're very aggressive, which is usually not the best sign. Got him, there we go, good one. He got that thing on the outside edge of that grass. Nice large mouth, there we go. Finally came up and got it. Hover rig, baby. Whoa, calm down fish, calm down, calm down. Get over here. There we go, graft him on the side imaging. Oh, choked, choked that little eighth ounce hover rig. I mean, that's what I am talking about. Caffeine shad, eighth ounce hover rig on the outside edge of that grass. Nice, solid fish. I mean, that is a good one. Let me get this guy on a scale real quick because that's a nice one. I mean, that's not a bad fish by any means. And I've literally never caught a fish right here before. I don't know why I'm catching him here today. Normally, I uh, catch him further down from this. And I, I've marked like a rocky spot here and I've probably graphed this like 30 times before. And they just... There we go, two pounds, four ounces. Oh, this guy's bleeding just a tiny bit. I'm gonna get him back down in the lake. There we go, you'll be fine. Two and a quarter pounder, nothing crazy, but hey, we got number one on the board. I'm actually gonna stop the recording here for just a second, guys. For whatever reason, uh, the recording, once it goes for more than like 30 minutes sometimes, will freeze, and I'll lose the footage. So I'm just going to stop the recording, restart it, then get back to fishing. I'm not like, doing anything crazy. I'm just literally gonna restart this and I'll cut this together in post. Okay, we're back, there we go. So again, got that fish on the Core Tackle eighth ounce hover rig with a watermelon candy striking caffeine chat junior, the four inch size. What I'm doing is I'm basically just getting on this grass hedge, guys, and you can see these fish on live scope. There's two of them right in front of the boat, literally right now, about 40 feet out. And I'm just getting my bait over onto this little break this little drop where these fish are and they're right here on this edge there's a couple of good ones about third there's a fish 30 foot out right now and i'm just trying to work my bait and glide it and hover it around these fish are somewhat suspended they're not setting up on the bottom or anything so a lot of times this hover rig can be a great tool with these fish because it gets right in their zone you can see there's a couple of them there we go he's coming over towards it i think about 30 feet out. My phone is going off like crazy right now. I don't know who's trying to reach me, but I'll check that here in a second. But there's a fish that's on my bait too. I'm gonna, my goodness people, who's texting me? One second here, guys. I need to check that just to make sure it's not an emergency or anything. I don't normally get 15 text messages in a row. Oh, no, we're good, okay. Just friends sending me funny pictures. Anyways, okay, let's, uh. Let's get back over and catch a fish. So, uh, it's old Matt Steffen over there. You guys know Matt from Core Tackle. He just texted me, texted me, texted me. Bam, right there, okay. See those fish about uh, 40, 50 feet out? You can see them, they're those brighter dots right there, 50 feet out on the screen. And there's several of them. I'm just gonna throw that hover rig down there to that general area. I'm not following my bait exactly. I'm just trying to use the live scope to give me a general sense of where these fish are located. And I'm just hopping it, swimming it, not doing anything super crazy. And wow, there's a bunch of those fish down there. Like seven or eight of them. Just trying to swim that thing kind of in that eight to 10 foot zone in the middle of the water column and see if one of them will come up and actually eat it. So there's several of them on that grass line. A lot of times I find with the live scope nowadays, guys, you don't really want to like cat and mouse them. If you spend too much time trying to get exactly on those fish and, and throw exactly on them, it can kind of do more harm than good at times. Sometimes it works out, but a lot of times it just doesn't help that much. Okay, and these fish have moved kind of, they're moving kind of fast. Oh, there's one literally right here. I'm gonna see if I can cat and mouse this guy. I'm just gonna drop it right, oh, missed it. A little bit closer to the edge than I thought. Okay. 
get right there, see if I can get this bait to fall down to him. Where'd my bait go? I have no idea where my bait is. That's very helpful. He could be eating it in his mouth right now. He could be, I could be a mile away from him. I have no idea where my bait went. Anyways, I'm not always perfect with this live scope deal. <laughs> Try my best, <laughs> but uh, I think my, my be, he's acting kind of weird. So maybe my bait's down there by him. Kind of lost my bait. They're on this outside edge there. There's actually also some fish that are kind of busting up in that grass a little bit too, which is kind of interesting. There's a thick wall right there. I mean, that wall is really pronounced. I'm also getting a lot of boat wakes from the one boat that's on the lake. He, apparently it's a ski boat or something. I don't know what's going on with all these wakes. Let me uh, try to see if I can see one of those guys again. There's some fish just up here. I mean, I think you may just be able to catch some fish just fishing this too. Well, I say that and I cast right into the, the weeds, right into the grass. Get off of there. There's the grass I'm fishing. Get off of there, okay. So you may be able to catch some of these fish just fishing as well. This is definitely the most effective way I've found to catch them. And usually these fish that are a little bit further out here off the bank are a little bit bigger. Just in general, not always the case, but a lot of times they are. Not the one I caught to start the day was a giant by any means. Just a little guy, but to start, there's two fish right there. And they're like really close. They're getting close to the boat, which is very odd. I'm normally not used to seeing these fish get this close to the boat and like not act weird. Last one bit it really close to the like boat, like almost under the boat, which is also very weird. You can see us two fish swimming. There's another fish that's over here. I'm gonna fire over on him. I'm not seeing my bait down there super well because of all the grass and the clutter on the screen. I'm trying to see my bait down to him if I can. There's several fish right in that area though. So as long as I get my bait somewhat down by them, I think that's fine. <laughs> Just working that bait super slow. I mean, that hovering. Oh, ho, 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 ho. you had it, didn't you, fish? Dang it. Oh, I see my bait now. Yeah, it's right in him. Several fish right there. He had that thing too. It's like right next to a fish's face. Come on, fish. Oh, he bit it again. Might be brim too, who knows. Wow, look at all those fish. There's several of them right on that grass edge. Right on the edge. The bigger ones though, I mean, those fish that you're seeing on the screen right there, they're kind of on the edge of that grass, do not look very big. I mean, there's a couple of them, well, I say that. A couple of them look decent, but they don't look like big, big. It seems like the better quality fish are more out and that's something you have to do guys at times when you're out here fishing is you have to kind of discern between the better quality fish and the smaller fish because at times you're going to think that all the fish are, you know, just fish, like fish, just catching any fish is fine. But if you want to go and you know, do well in a tournament or, or perform better on the water and catch bigger fish, you have to get better at discerning the size of the fish you're seeing both on your... 2D sonar, down imaging, stuff like that, but also on live scope. Because if you can do that, a lot of times you can put yourself in a position to catch really good quality fish by just paying attention to what, when you catch a fish, what did it look like on the live scope? What size was the fish? How big was the dot? Where was it positioned relative to all the other fish you're seeing? Was it further out from the grass? Was it on the edge of the grass? Was it out here way in the open? Where, where are you seeing this? Where are you getting bit? All these little things play into it. And it's not just this perfect puzzle that you see when I like put a full YouTube video together where it's like, oh, I just pulled up and just figured it out. Like there's some fish there out here. There's a good one on the outside edge out there. There's a couple good ones actually. Fire on those. 
it's not this perfect, simple puzzle that's like, oh, I get out here, I graph them, and I immediately start catching them. A lot of times it's like, man, I got to trial and error at multiple baits, figure out where within these areas are like the key sweet spot, missing a bunch of casts, not getting in the right area right away. All these different things contribute. And then eventually, once you get it all dialed in and you figure out, okay, they're more on this deeper outside edge versus up against the shallow edge or the hover rig's the bait or something else is the bait because might, this might not be the best bait for it. We just don't always know right off the bat. So we just kind of have to experiment, try our best. There's some, there's some fish down there, guys. You can see them. They're actually on my bait, too. The bait's down there. Some decent ones. Oh, it's falling right through them. Eat it, fish. Man, my bait was right down there with them. So, like, those fish didn't bite. So why don't those fish bite? Well, are they bass? I don't know. Is it because I let my bait get underneath those fish? Maybe that's the thing. Maybe they want the bait to stay above them when it's going by. Maybe they don't like it going past them. <clears throat> that can be a, a whole deal just bite-wise. These fish like a bait that just glides over the top of them and that's why you're not getting bit. Maybe it's that these, again, aren't even bass. Maybe these are grass carp for all I know. Uh, so, it's not black or white. And I'm just talking to fill time and space too, guys, because I'm out here live fishing. and Got nothing else to do but talk to you guys. There's a couple of fish right here. Get a bite. Let's see. And despite my early success here, these also just might not be the fish I need to be fishing for. Like, I caught a two pounder and that's fine. But maybe if I go fish something different, I'll start catching four pounders. So I'm also not gonna get tied in to just say, hey, I had this one bite, I'm not going to do this the rest of the day, guaranteed, and just lock this deal in my hand. Something better might show up. And that was exactly what happened the other day when I was on Grand Lake. I thought I was gonna catch them cranking because I caught a couple fish cranking to start the day. And then after a little bit, the crankbait fish just wouldn't bite and I started catching them the fire out of my little prototype swim bait hook on a new technique and I just called an audible completely even though I was catching them pretty well doing what I was doing. So I'm not gonna get tied in hundred percent to this deal. There are fish here. I don't know if they're gonna... I might need to back off them too, maybe. Maybe the hover rig isn't the right bait. There's, I mean, there's some fish here though. It may seem like I have all the answers in my videos, but that's why I wanted to start making these videos for you guys because most of the time, I don't have any of the answers. Just making guesses. Trying my best not to suck. It's like 90% of fishing is trying not to suck. Another fish right there. Man, there are a lot of fish swimming around out here. I just don't know what they all are. If they're all bass, they're not, very few are interested in my bait. There's my bait. I mean, there's bait coming out 30 foot right now. It's coming across the two fish. About to go right over top of their head. We'll see if they, it's coming right over top of their head right now. You can react fish. Do 
no react. Yeah, I saw something else out here that looked interesting. It's like a rock or something. Oh, right there. There's like a little pod of, looks like brim or something that's down there in that grass. It's a little bluegill, I think. And it's in the pot of grass, it's out here a little bit deeper. I might just be getting too close to him with a live scope and it's freaking him out. I might just need to let this rest come back and then bomb some casts up here. That might be the, the play. I kind of got a little bit optimistic with him because, I mean, it worked out pretty well. Ooh, is that a fish or is that grass? I can't tell. Got a little bit optimistic with him because I uh, was able to make it work for that first fish that I dropped on and then the next couple. But maybe I just need to, to chill a little bit and make some longer casts on these fish as opposed to picking them off one by one like this. Wow, there's a bunch of fish right out here. That's maybe what I'm gonna do. There's this edge. There's basically an edge that's like right here. It cuts in and then it's like a little, makes a corner. And what I might just do is I'm just gonna spot lock here. And instead of trying to just pick this apart with the live scope, I know there's fish. I'm seeing them all over this area. And what I might do is just kind of fan cast with this hover for a second. Just give myself like 10 minutes. And I'm just gonna fan cast this little ditch here. There's a little ditch that comes out and there's a little point here. And I might just spend, Five, 10 minutes just fan casting this to see if uh, that helps and not live scope them, not try to put the scope too close to them. And might make a cast behind the boat even down that edge as well, just to see. Just work this hover, because we know they, they'll eat the hover because we've had two fish now bite it. The first one I missed, if I had this hover on, I'm pretty sure I would've caught him. Um, I'm going to fire out that out there. I'm going to make a cast like there, make one more cast just to the left of that on this outside edge. Probably fire behind the bow to cast, and I'll probably move up like, I don't know, 20 yards, and then make another cast and do the same thing, repeat the process. We'll see if that gets any more bites. If it doesn't get any more bites, then obviously we can go back to trying to just target these fish. Because a lot of times with a live scope deal too, you'll put it in front of 30 fish and then, or 50 fish, and then one of them will bite and it's just a numbers game. And if you're in, around enough fish, you can just, you know, throw it and throw it and throw it. Eventually you're going to get one. Throw it in front of enough of them, you'll finally get one is what I mean to say. But There's a bunch of fish that are busting up in that grass. It almost makes me want to pick up a frog for a second. Do I have a frog tied on? I don't know if I even have a frog. No, I don't. I don't have anything tied on. What do I have? Do I have like a, do I have a, I only have offshore stuff. Never mind. We don't need to catch the shallow fish. That's not what you guys are here for anyways. Screw it. Okay, one more cast over here. It's got a little bit shallow over there. Throw one more cast on this outside deal. Uh, I'm gonna probably spin around fire one cast behind the boat. We'll do this and then if that doesn't work, what I'm thinking about doing is just rolling these grass edges because maybe there's enough fish that are just still on this grass edge that if I roll this whole grass edge even down there and there's another one around the corner over there, maybe I can just pick off enough fish, just try that, just give it a little bit, not a ton of time. And I don't know if this is where the big fish are. Maybe the big fish are still out deeper, uh, potentially. There's also some brush up here. Maybe there's some fish there in the brush. I just need to uh, get in the brush. Not sure yet. But there's a lot of life around this outside grass edge. You can see them swimming down there. I mean, on the live scope, they're swimming everywhere. I'm sure that's a lot of little bluegill. There's some bass they're chasing. Look at this on the screen, actually. What the heck is happening? You see this? There's like several fish here coming up. What is that? That is freaking weird. What are those? What 
Did he have my bait? He's like running from my bait. That's cool. They're so scared of my bait, they're running away from it. Those have to be like carp or so, those can't be bass. No, those don't, those are not bass. I don't know what those are. Anyways, uh, let me just, actually let me spin around, do what I was gonna say, just fire cast this way. Spot lock us for a second. Fire cast that way. And then there's a point up here. I'm just gonna ease my way in, cast this little ditch, fish this point. I, I just really wanna see if I can catch him just fishing. And a lot of times that is all it takes. There's also that really good grassy edge that we graft on that side that we didn't see. The thing is, I didn't see a ton of fish on it. That's the thing. When I was graphing that other edge over there, oh, was that a fish? One just bumped it, it must've been a bluegill. Um, when I was graphing on the other side, I didn't see that many fish. I saw, I marked that one little spot that looked kind of interesting. Uh, I remember where I saw a fish, I think. So we may sneak back on the other side of this point and fish that as well, because we did mark that. If we work our way this way and we, st we stop seeing them, but I have a feeling they're probably just gonna be using this grass edge, most likely. And this is a deal, guys, when you go fishing, I mean, when you watch professional anglers fish, you watch anybody fish, you gotta remember that these pros are fishing. Wow, there's so many fish right there. What the heck is that? Anyways, these pros are fishing for like eight hour days. So when you see a guy go out and catch 15, 18 pounds of fish, or even our YouTubers, they're not out there most of the time for like an hour and then just start landing on them and catching them. It takes a while. So not only does it take a while to find the fish, it also takes a while to dial in the bait, the retrieve, how the fish are sitting up on that given day, because not every single day is going to be the same. When you go out to the lake, you're not just gonna pull up and catch them on the same brush pile every single time you go, or you're not gonna pull up and catch them on, um, you know, even if you see fish on your graph, you're not just gonna pull up there and catch them first cast every time. There are a lot of factors. One, feeding windows. A lot of times these fish really feed up really heavy, first hour of the morning, and then maybe like an hour in the afternoon, and then an hour before dark. And every time in between, they are real finicky, kind of like they are right now, where I, you know, I really have to work them to get them to bite. There's other factors that guys don't take into consideration, like you get into an area, maybe you find an area with fish, but that area has, doesn't have the quality you want. Maybe instead of catching the four pounders, you're catching two pounders, like the one I just caught. And so you have to work through multiple areas like this so you find the area that's holding the better quality fish. And at other times, it's just, oh, what was that? Other times, it just takes a long time to get bit. Like, there's days where it takes me a full eight hours to put five quality fish in the boat. And that's why when you see guys fishing professional tournaments and stuff, they fish for eight hours. And on top of that, they have multiple days of practice. I haven't been out to this lake since April, maybe like first week of April. So it's not like I'm out here practicing this stuff. I'm just going out here showing you what I'm figuring out you know, as we, as we go, kind of flying by the seat of my pants sort of deal. And that's fine, but it doesn't always mean then that I'm gonna come out here and just bust their heads in because I haven't been out here. I don't, I don't know exactly what these fish are doing, what they want, what stage they're in. There's a lot of factors about fishing that are not easy to figure out just in an hour or two. So don't go out expecting when you go to the lake, guys, that you're gonna go out here and fish for 25 or 30 minutes and have the same success on these lakes as a pro fisherman or even YouTubers who will spend two days, three days on these lakes trying to figure out the exact spots, the exact baits, the retrieves. And then when they make their YouTube video, it's like, oh, that's awesome. They caught a bunch of fish, but they also spent five days figuring it out or two days or three days in the lake for eight to 12 hours a day. I mean, it's, it's tough, fishing is hard. There's a lot of water to cover. You're, you can't see where the fish are always that easily. You kind of have to just play it all by ear. Ooh, get up there, fish. Where are all those fish? Kind of have to play it by ear. It, it is easier with stuff like the live scope. It's made it a little bit easier, but it doesn't mean that it's made it like foolproof where you just can go around and not actually work at it to catch fish. And also you got to figure out these small little details day to day on the lake. So. Hopefully I can show you that in all these videos. You can see like right now, there's a bunch of fish that are <laughs> reacting to my bait. 
they're moving on it, but they're not eating it. Why is that? I have no idea. But they just aren't. They aren't having it right now. That's fine. Because, I mean, I caught my, if I was in a tournament or whatever, okay, I caught one fish. This is my first hour of the day. I caught a two and a quarter pounder. That's not bad. If I can do that once an hour, I catch eight keepers. One fish per hour gives me a really good bag. If you do the averages, that's all I need. I don't need to catch 45 fish to get a good bag of fish if I'm a tournament fisherman. Even just fun fishing, for me, I don't mind if I only catch five or six or seven fish in a day, as long as I'm enjoying the process of finding them and, you know, using my skills and knowledge to try to trick these fish. That to me is super rewarding as well. So part of fishing times, guys, is just enjoying the process, enjoying the, the grind of finding the fish. That's 90% that's of fishing. If you don't enjoy that part of it, it may be hard to enjoy fishing. That's the rewarding part too, is you work so hard and you finally figure out how to catch these fish that are sitting here literally just chilling, doing nothing. I don't know why they're not biting, but that is what it is. Okay, we're gonna keep rolling through here. I'm gonna kinda go fast. I'm not seeing a bunch of active or aggressive fish. I'm not seeing that many big fish either. The thing about that first spot we graph, the reason I like to graph spots before I fish them, and I'm kind of breaking my golden rule here of just, I'm just kind of live scoping around. I do this more and more often, guys, recently, is I'll just get into the habit of just like live scoping around. I'm actually gonna stop myself because I just need to get out of this bad habit. I don't like just live scoping stuff. First, I like to graph it with, with my down imaging, with my 2D, because it lets me see the size of the fish, and that's really, really helpful for me. I'm gonna pause this recording here again for just a second. I'm gonna switch over to the scene, and I'll be back in a second, and uh, then just gonna start this recording and stop it again. Okay, we're back. Let's get this uh, show on the road. Okay, so yeah, I like to graph stuff, guys, because whenever I'm graphing, I just have a lot more confidence knowing that I'm gonna find better quality fish. The thing is, is you can go through here and you can see if a fish has good size with the live scope and things like that, but you're gonna have to really work and pan and move side to side. And a lot of you guys say that they just don't graph anymore. I've talked to a lot of top pros that say, hey, I just pull up and just live scope stuff because you miss a bunch of stuff on side imaging, down imaging, stuff like that. And I get where they're coming from on that 100% because it's easier to see on the live scope, but I feel like I can still do it really well with my 2D sonar side imaging, down imaging. So I'm going to use that as a tool. If you're not as comfortable with this, like what I'm graphing here now, that's 100% fine too. Dial in that live scope and figure out how to determine the size of the fish using the live scope. But either way, if you're offshore, figuring out if there are better quality fish around your area is critical before you waste a ton of time fishing. That first spot I pulled up on there and actually started making a cast, way offshore, we saw a few decent sized fish, but we didn't put them in the boat. Second spot we pulled up on, saw some really good fish on the side imaging, caught a decent one, missed a decent one. Now, the other thing too is I can start seeing cover very easily, so we got a brush pile there. I'm gonna spin around and re-graph that. I don't know if these fish are gonna be in the brush. They should be in the brush. If there wasn't a lot of grass in the lake, I would expect that a lot of these fish would be in these brush piles, especially the shallower brush piles. I don't know if that's gonna be the case now though, just because ooh, there's some fish that are on the bottom down there though. Look at that, there are several good arches right, right on the bottom, 15 feet of water on the 2D, and there's also some fish that are chilling out in front. Wow, there's a bunch of stuff happening right here. Here's that brush pile, we're gonna graph it. I'm not seeing actually all that much stuff around the brush pile, but what really excited me was how many little arches and fish there were, and there's actually a bunch of fish right there too. These are all, I'm sure a lot of these are a little brim and stuff like that, but I mean, this little grass edge is just loaded up with fish all over. But what really got me excited, if we go back over to this, uh, my traditional view, right here you can see that there's a handful of fish that are setting up like really tight to the bottom, right there. And those fish are sitting like 15 foot, and if I can pull those fish off the bottom, those might be my better quality fish. Uh, I'm gonna just mark that with a fish icon, and we're gonna keep graphing. I'm not going to stop quite yet, because there's only one or two decent ones down there, but that's something that's a little bit different. And there is a little grass edge there, so we can go and fish that grass edge as well, um, which is not a problem. I'm gonna graph though, I wanna, I wanna graph, there's a couple more brush pile areas and there's a couple of grassy areas I wanna graph. 
and I wanna just spend a little bit more time really dialing in what's going on before I commit. I'm feeling like I wanna to commit to this outside grass edge deal. I have that first spot that I uh, graphed that I marked. There's a little grassy edge that we haven't fished yet. We have the spot where I caught the fish, so we have that. But I don't wanna commit quite yet, because once you commit, you're gonna waste a lot of time trying to dial in that deal, and maybe there's a better deal out there. So, you know, as, as, if you can spend 15 to 30 minutes eliminating more stuff so you feel more confident that what you are committing to is the best deal on the lake, I always find that that's valuable. I hate committing to something that's not great. Maybe it, it works, maybe it's a decent pattern, but it is a thing that maybe I can get bit on once an hour, and there's a better deal out there where I can get bit once every 10 minutes. And I would prefer to be fishing a thing where I can get bit once every 10 minutes. And so that's why I am not just running spots that match where I caught the first fish right away. I'm still experimenting a little bit just to see if there's anything better. Hopefully that makes sense. Now there's some brush out here. I know about, um, I just see it over here. I'm gonna graph this brush. I'm actually gonna pull up my mapping combo. So I know there's the brush pile I marked out here. I just want to see if there's any fishing brush, because if you can find the fishing brush piles out here, usually they're better quality fish. Um, I just don't know if, whoa, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if they're out here. I mean, the fish are out here. I know the brush piles are out here. I, don't, I, I have a feeling these fish might not be out here quite yet. Um, there's a little rocky deal out here too I want to check. That brush pile is not as brushy as I thought it was. Check some of this rocky stuff out here. Just want to eliminate a couple of things first. Because if like they're all over this rock, for example, and I could just pull up here and drag a jig around and catch fish after fish after fish, that would be pretty sweet. But if not, I kind of want to know that. Let's see here. So there's that little edge. some brush and there's that harder rocky bottom not seeing much like I'm, I'm kind of just looking at side imaging I'm not really even down imaging it I'm just looking at that whole thing on side scan I'm not seeing much out here in terms of fish I'm gonna kind of just zigzag this for a second zigzag this other point and then there's some, uh, there's another little grassy ditch thing over here we're gonna go graph for a second, just take a look at it. This water is kind of muddy, it's kind of interesting. It's got a weird visibility to it right now. It's been pretty clear all summer and it kind of got muddy on us. That's not that big of a deal. We're gonna go graph this little ditch thing, see if there's anything going on here, and then if not, we're gonna probably, probably go run that pattern off of that first fish we caught. Let me just check this real quick. I know a handful more spots that's set up like the one I just fished. And this could be one of them. Some brush right there. brush on the edge of that ditch. Are there any fish around in there? Those look like brush. And then there's a little bit of cabbage and stuff. Not seeing a ton of fish like that one spot where there were just, you could just see them all over the down imaging. They were, the fish were just going crazy on that. Uh, I, that's what I'm looking for. I want to find a spot where it's like, bam, fish. You can just see them on the graph. Because even in this grass, uh, if you have your stuff set right, your settings set right, you can see these fish in the grass, no problem. With your electronics nowadays, which is kind of nice. Especially when you get out kind of in these opening areas. And I'm just not seeing much in terms of fish, which is not bad. It just means that this is not the little deal we need to be on. We have definitely where I, 
I marked those fish earlier. There's definitely some fish there. I think we got three spots right now that may have the right stuff. I'm just gonna keep graphing here for a minute though. Got some bluegill beds maybe, or well, I don't know what this little indentions. Looks like bluegill beds actually right there. That's pretty interesting. If we go to the side view, you can actually see those brim beds right on the edge of that deal, right there. I'm gonna mark those. I just want to go scan those. What am I gonna use for brim beds? I haven't even figured out what I want to do for that yet. Uh, which icon are we gonna use? Are there any other icons that we like? Um, huh. Well, brim, brim, what would be a brim? I have no idea. I can't think of anything that would look, that looks like a brim on here. Maybe I'm just like missing it. Maybe there's an actual brim on here. Uh, I'm just going to mark it with the little, this deal, I don't know what that is, it's little stakes. Okay, I'm gonna do that. So we got that brim bed marked. I'm actually gonna pull up and fish that because it's right on that grassy edge. If we kind of go back here, stop here. It's right on the edge of that grass. There's a drop right there. We have open water, brim bed right there. And then we have that deal right there with the grass. That looks pretty spicy. There's also a brush pile right there. I just wanna look at this real quick. I don't see anything in terms of like a ton of fish, but the fact that we see that brim bed does give me some potential optimism right there. We're kind of a little bit off of it, which is fine. And we're just, I just want to check that real quick because I want to see, I mean, I haven't really done a ton of brim bed fishing this year. I don't know if the fish are going to be that deep on these brim beds, but I do want to check it because if they're there and we see the brim swimming, that could be a pretty easy way to identify these fish too. If we don't catch fish here, then we can just, you know, ignore that and go back to what we were doing earlier. But I think it's a good experiment at least to run. Let's see here lined up on that little deal. It's right on the edge of this little ditch, which is pretty cool. I can see this being good. Slow down there, bud. Okay. Let's see what we see. Do we see fish? Do we see brim? Do we see anything? Those are all questions we need to ask ourselves, ask ourselves right now. There's maybe a fish 60 feet out. Oh, there's one. No, is that grass? It might be just grass. Try to point out these fish the best I can verbally to you guys when I start seeing them. If I start seeing them, that's a big if. Um, okay, there's some brush right here. I'm gonna fire across this brush. And that pile got covered up in grass. some brush right there. I'm going to try to swim my little deal over that. There it is. There's my bait. Fish. Ooh, he was interested for a second. They're not interested. Okay, where's that brim bed? Okay, it's more up this way. Okay, so I'm not seeing much. I didn't see a lot of fish on the graph. So, I mean, at least my, my graphing process may be somewhat effective. There is a fish there. 
You just eat my bait if I throw it in your face. Oh. Apparently you swim away from it. Okay, it's fine. Um, let's see here. Okay, it's straight ahead now. The brim, the deal. That's it right there. I'm not, I mean, you can't really tell on the live scope, but the brim bed is right there. It's just, I'm not really seeing, maybe there are a few brim down there, maybe. I'm not seeing anything that like jump, jumps off the screen at me, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, it might be a dead old brim bed. I didn't see the brim down in the bed or anything, but didn't know that meant anything. But I mean, as you can see, there's nothing really around that grass. It's not like we're seeing fish swimming around it or anything. Maybe there's one fish right there. Okay, you can see one. I think there are a couple fish down there. Yeah, there's one right there. Right on that outside edge. I mean, one fish is not really something to get super excited about, to be honest. And I think that we have better potential in other places we've already graphed, so. Coming for my bait though. Ooh, eat it. Come on, fish. He tried to come after it. He got some grass on it or something, but. Okay, let's roll. Okay, so that was a failed venture, but we learned something. One, you can't just graph random brim beds with nothing around them and catch fish which probably isn't that surprising to anybody but hey at least we gave it a shot so now let's go back over here pull this up I want to graph one more little deal that we kind of skipped over on our way over here see if it's any good then we got those three spots and we're just going to kind of maybe just try and milk those three few spots where we saw a bunch of fish uh, we have only fished one of the three if we catch fish on the other two, we figured it out, we got a deal. Uh, if we don't catch fish on the other three, or the other two, then let's figure something else out. That's just how it goes out here, unfortunately. Let's see here. Okay, we're coming up on a little, there's another ditch here uh, with some grass. It usually has some fish around it. It doesn't have as hard of a drop as the last couple though. The last few have had a pretty sharp drop off, which don't know how important that is right now, but we shall see. Okay, so we got a bunch of grass chilling out here. Let's see if we can see anything. here. So we're getting up in this grass a little bit, not seeing anything that's jumping off the screen in terms of a bunch of fish or a bunch of bait or, or brim or anything. There's a bunch of floating grass in this area. Like someone's been over here like doing donuts or something. It's like there's floating grass chopped up, which is weird. It's the only part of the lake where it's like that right, right here. So maybe that's just a bad sign too, that there, this might not be a good little area. Okay, that didn't pan out. Okay, so we definitely have, we have a spot literally right up in front of us here, so I'll show you on the, the big map. 
basically the spots we found is we have a spot right here, this fish icon three. We have this, this fish icon three, and then we have that grass clump right there. So those are the three spots we marked today that potentially could have fish. We're working up towards this marker here. We're gonna check that. We'll probably then, uh, we may fish our way over because there's a little rocky patch here. We may fish over to that. Actually, no, I think we've already fished that actually. I need to keep, put my little path on or whatever, but that's okay. But we're gonna kind of work our way from here. We're gonna go hit that spot where we started the day and then we're also gonna go uh, hit that last little grass clump. We're just gonna run these really fast. Probably spend no more than, I don't know, 10 minutes on each spot, 15 minutes. And if we're not absolutely tearing it up, then uh, we will call the audible. But I don't wanna waste a lot of time doing this. I wanna, maybe right now it's 10 o'clock. So I'd like to fish to like 10.30 on this deal. And if it is working and we fish these three spots for 10, 15 minutes a piece, if 10.30 and we catch them, awesome. If not, we can then call another audible, try to figure out another deal. Cause we don't wanna waste time. There's definitely some freaking fish out here. Some they all are. There's so many fish, you just can't, it feels like they can't all be bass. I know they're not all bass, but like some of these better ones, it's hard to say if these are all bass. Some of these are bass, none of them are bass. Look at this deal. And that's a lot of fish right there on the screen. That's right where I marked all those fish too earlier. Basically at least. Look at all those fish. Have to be brim and some other stuff mixed in. Those can't all be bass. When there's so much going on, on the screen, it's kind of hard to know what to even throw at. Like, do you throw at which of these dots and arches and or things do you do you even bother with? To be honest, it's a little bit overwhelming. That's why I don't like to waste so much of time fishing these spots. And I, usually, what I like to do in these situations is I like to fish for the fish that are tighter to the bottom when in doubt. So like there's a couple of fish here over here that are a little bit tighter to the bottom. I like to fish for those bottom fish when there's a lot of crap going on because usually those are gonna be your better largemouth. Just in, as a rule, that's not, sometimes they're catfish too. But a lot of times those dots that are tighter to the bottom are going to be your better quality bass. So I like to target those. That's what the first fish was that, that bit. He came up off the bottom. That's how we're gonna at least try to focus our efforts a little bit because it's just overwhelming to see all this stuff on the screen. Coming up on that little deal where we saw those fish, a bunch of fish in this outside edge of this grass too earlier. The fire up there. Water got real muddy too, which is interesting. Let's see here. So there's a bunch of stuff out here. I'm thinking a lot of this, these are not bass. Oh, that looks slightly more intriguing. Kind of out in that direction anyway, so we'll just kind of work my bait in. It's very helpful having this Aftco Reaper sun shirt with the uh, the hood. If you guys don't have sun shirts, definitely get them. It helps a lot. It seems like it's weird to wear a hood this time of year, but it it just keeps you cool when you're out here for a long time, baking in the sun with no wind. It's very nice. 
a couple of fish right there that I just work my bait past and they do not seem to care. They're more on the outside edge of that grass. Just gonna look, there's a decent one. I'm trying to look for the bigger arches there's a, or bigger dots. There's a bigger dot right at 50 feet. Trying to look for those bigger dots and fire at those versus the smaller dots. The smaller dots, I'm pretty sure, are little panfish and things like that. Sometimes, though, those little dots turn out to just be two or three or four fish grouped up on top of each other, giving you a stronger ret return. There's a lot of things that could happen there, so it's not a foolproof method. That's what I'm at least attempting to do here. So right out this way is a brush pile. I'm gonna see if I can tangle with this brush pile for a second. Might throw a slightly different bait on them too over here. Let's pull out this deal. On this thing a little bit more. It's a brush pile out here. I'm trying to line up on, see if I can find it here. It's a little bit tough with the screen right now. It's a little bit, uh, the sun's hitting at a bad angle. I'm actually going to switch my color palette here for me. It shouldn't change anything for you guys back there, I don't think. But it will let me see this brush a little bit easier in the sun. What the heck? Oh, it's over there? What the what in the world? Why am I? Okay. Apparently, my boat was right on top of it. I don't know what was going on. I kind of lost it. There's some shad down there, though. Look at that. There's some shad around that brush. Maybe brush could be the deal. too close on this brush, I think. Float that hover rig through there, the heavy, little bit heavier duty one. See if that works.
working this deal through the brush. See if one picks it up. I got a little bit close on this brush pile, but we're gonna see if it matters. Maybe I just already screwed it up. We'll see, maybe I didn't. We'll cast on this thing and then we'll go try the uh, We'll try this next spot, spot where we started off, caught our first fish. We'll try that deal. If that doesn't work, then we'll try the first spot we graft, and then we may start running some of these brush piles because I'm seeing a little bit more bait and a little bit more life and activity around this brush than I first initially thought I would. I'm not seeing any real big fish in and around it though, but I know that big fish use this brush. So this could be another pattern that we might just start running some brush piles because it's just, I mean, it's May, offshore. That's just a way to catch big ones this time of year is just running brush. So it's more of a gut thing that I'm like, hey, I think I can catch them out of brush just as a gut instinct versus, you know, seeing them all over the graph in the brush. But we'll make one more cast here, and then we're going to run back to where we got that first bite or caught that first fish. We may have just landed on the best spot to start the day, and we just kind of got a little bit tight on them. I think if I stay further off and bomb some casts up there, I probably can maybe fool a couple more into biting. It's yet to be seen, though. I may also just have to drop it on their nose like I have been doing. Got too close to this brush pile. Okay, let's roll. We're gonna head back to where we started our day. That's how it goes, guys. You just kind of gotta keep keep trying. I'm gonna stop this recording. Sorry again. Just so you guys know already. Okay, we're back. We're gonna get back over to the spot we marked earlier. So we idle over here, put a life jacket on, even though we're going slow. Big shout out to the sponsor of these uncut Fish the Moment videos, Bridgeford Foods. Bridgeford has been an awesome sponsor of Fish the Moment for years now. Have the softest and best beef jerky on the market, in my opinion. And you can find it over at your local gas stations, dollar stores, and Walmarts. Definitely check out some Bridgeford beef jerky next time you are on the lake or head to the lake. It's a great boat snack. Also, make sure you drink water when you're out here fishing. Pretty important. Oh man, it's getting a little bit hot. Getting a little bit hot. I'm excited for these fish to get a little bit further offshore. They're still kind of not quite out yet, I don't think. And I like to catch them deep, as you guys know, and so these fish, I mean, they're kind of deep. They're not necessarily like super deep though. They're just kind of, they're on the outside edge. They're kind of on those tra that transition deal still, which makes it not always the easiest to catch or makes them not the easiest to catch. Okay, so we're gonna basically get lined up on where I saw those fish up here, and I'm actually going to spot lock us here. Now I'm gonna make a handful of casts just here, and I'm gonna fan cast this area, and just work my bait nice and slow and not actually live scope them quite yet. Try to stay off them a little bit. chill for a minute. See if this helps get these fish fired up a little bit. Just working that hover rig nice and slow. I mean, really, I'm not doing all that much, anything crazy with the hover, guys. Fire it out there. Let's sink down there to the bottom and just kind of hop it, twitch it, fish it. Kind of like a, a jig. I hop a little bit higher than the normal jig 
just because it bounce, it'll pop off the bottom higher. And those fish seem to like it when that bait is, is coming up off the bottom higher and then falling, because it's really the gliding motion of that hover rig that gets these fish to bite. It's not actually the, uh, the bait just like sitting on the bottom working slow. You want to make sure you give that bait a chance to actually do its magic, which is the, the glide. So hop it a little bit higher off the bottom in the standard jig and let that bait glide and fall. And it'll put them in the boat. It's just right now they're, I mean, it's dead calm. These are the, these are the toughest fishing conditions right now, guys, is these dead calm conditions, no wind. It's just very still. This is the time when the spinning rod will play for sure. And uh, the hover rig will play also in these situations. It's just gonna be a slow bite. Now, if the wind picks up or if something goes crazy, I mean, these fish could start, I mean, just firing and we could be putting them in the boat every cast. A lot of times it's 10 o'clock is like the toughest time of the year in the summer to fish just because the fish are not in their morning, they, they're done with their morning bite, they're done being aggressive in the morning, but then they haven't quite transitioned to that like afternoon feed. And usually there's a good afternoon feed that happens in the summer, I found at least, at like noon, one o'clock range. That's when it gets really good in the summer. And these fish right now are just in between that. They're not quite at that afternoon feed yet and they're not in the morning bite. So we're stuck in the middle, but can't always choose when you go fishing. You just gotta kinda make it happen when you can. I'm bringing my bait up to one right now. See if he eats it. Oh, come on fish, eat it. There he is, he's on it. He's on it. There are two of them on it. Got him, there we go, that was cool. Good one, good one. Oh my gosh, you guys watched that whole thing on live scope. That was amazing. They are here on this spot, guys. Oh, golly, jumped off. Whew, that was a three and a half to four pounder. Dang it, ah, happens. Hover rig, core tackle, eighth ounce. Jumped off on me. Mm. Make sure that was going. That was a good one, guys. We were recording. Hopefully you saw the fish jump. I mean, oh, that's a heartbreaker. Four pounder. But we at least got a bite. We know what we're doing. We saw that one on live scope. Come up and crush it. I hate losing them, though. That really sucks. There's another one down there. Let's see if I can catch him again. Get another bite. There's another one down there, but oh. Heartbreaker, four pounder, fishing's tough. Dang it, thought I had him pretty good too. Didn't even think about the fact that he might not eat it. I was just playing with him, hopping it up, working it by him, came up and hammered it 30 foot away from the boat. Ugh. You know, when you lose fish, guys, it's just never fun. It's just never fun. But there's more of them out here. At least we know that we're, <laughs> we found some good stuff. I'm gonna switch up, re redo this. I'm gonna retie real quick. I just need to take a break. Oh, cover. Let's uh, make sure our hook's sharp. Hook is sharp. You just lose fish, guys. It just happens. It's part of the game, part of the game. I haven't lost a lot of fish recently and I've just started to lose, start losing a bunch of them. The last couple fishing trips, I have a video coming out where I caught them on this new prototype hover, uh, or core, it's a new core tackle swim bait hook that I've talked about and I was on Grand and uh, had <laughs> a day, caught a five and a half and a four and a half on it, but I jumped off like two, three and a halfs, a four and like another five. I would have had like 23 to 24 pounds of fish on Grand for my best five if I uh, put them all in the boat. And I didn't. And sometimes these fish just, eat, you know, they'll, they'll throw it and it's just not always your day. Sometimes it's your gear and your equipment and everything. So don't exactly what it was in that one. I think that one was just the fish jumped off. Maybe I was trying to work them a little bit too fast up to the boat. Maybe I could have let them, let them chill for a little bit longer. 
but I'll show you what I'm doing here when I'm rigging this real quick. I'll switch over to this camera. Here we go. So got my, uh, oh, give me a second here. Okay, so I got this uh, core tackle, eighth ounce hover rig here, striking caffeine shad, eighth ounce, or uh, sorry, <laughs> striking caffeine shad, four inch in the watermelon candy color. Just inserting that hook point from the hover rig into the nose of that bait, just a quarter inch down from the nose, not right through the nose, just a quarter inch down from the nose. I'm pushing that plastic up until it hits the cones there. Then I'm gonna push that plastic up. You're gonna see the hook point now is kind of sticking out from the bait. All you have to do is continue to push that plastic up until it meets the hook eye, and then just pinch and pull up. And that will insert the lead right into the top of that bait and it's now all that lead is contained inside that bait it glides it it floats around and it drives these fish crazy you see now two of these uncuts in a row the hover rig has come into play this fish right there they love this thing and uh i've been catching them on it it's just bad luck that i lost that good one But see if I can get another one. Not doing anything fancy with this deal, guys. Just, I mean, with the live scope and the hover rig, it, it's a really good tool for just getting on these fish and just kind of dropping it in front of their nose. And just trying to find these, some of these isolated good ones that are swimming around out here. There's a handful of them, like there's one right there. They're, you know, three to four pounders. Come on, fish. See him right on that edge. Let's see if my bait can get down to him. There's a couple of them down there. I don't know where my bait is. Oh, is he on it? Fish down this little drop here. I don't know what he's doing. Let's see here. Anybody else home? Any other good ones around here? Oh, let's see. There's one directly underneath the boat, which is not a deal. Oh, is he coming for it though, anyways? Eat a fish. He's right there. He's right underneath the boat. He's staring at it. Not interested. Okay. So. Or a handful of fish out here. Not a lot, and I kind of screwed up the spot a little bit because I kind of got close on top of it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the spot rest. A lot of times on these spots, guys, these fish will set up on little key little deals, and then you catch one, and then they kind of like just get weird. So I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna uh, idle over to this other spot we found. And then there's another little deal over here that a guy was just fishing. He just left. I know sets up kind of similar. We might go fish that for a second. 
Let me stop this recording really fast. There we go, okay. Ooh, yeah. there we go. Okay, there we go, we're back. So let me uh, switch back over. So we're just changing spots here. We're gonna go, actually just put this chart on. We're gonna go around this corner. We're gonna check this, uh, this waypoint I made, 186. It's around the corner from this that had that little drop off and there was a few fish. And then there's another spot that opened up over there that guy was on that I might go check out as well. I guess I should just have this graph up on graphing or have my uh, at least something up while I'm driving around see if I miss anything but the thing that's weird is like that spot there I got that one fish to bite and there's like a handful of those bass that are grouped up around there but they're not going crazy by any means it's definitely they're hard they're grouped up on those hard edges where you have a hard drop off which we know this next spot we're going to has I know there's a spot over here that has that same deal uh, across the lake and there's just a handful of them down there, but they're good ones. And we just need to find enough of those things. And again, there's a lot of grass on this lake, so it's not like every single grass stretch we're gonna run to is going to have fish. The reason that this grass, these couple of grass spots that I've already, or that one grass spot where I just caught that fish is productive is because there's a hard drop off right next to that grass. That's kind of the key deal. Now this spot we just grabbed over there has that, I just don't think they've pulled all the way out here yet because this is pretty far out in the middle of the lake. So what we have to do is find an area that has a hard drop off edge. And I'm actually gonna work a little bit further over to here because there's a whole little road bed thing that runs through there. And I think I can actually start at this area up here as boat dock and I can work my way down that edge. But I'm gonna try to find a hard edge with grass. And basically you wanna find an edge to the grass where it drops off from like 10 foot of water down into 15 or 20, that's what they seem to be on today. And that's kind of what I'm gonna look for, that's the pattern. So it's the pattern within the pattern. It's finding these grassy spots that have a hard break from 10 to 15 feet of water uh, where there's actual grass up there and then find those fish that are on the edge. Those are where the better quality ones seem to be. And that's what we're going to try to imitate right here. And then if this doesn't uh, pan out, this little spot here, I mean, that looks pretty good right there to be honest too. A little bit shallow though. That's not too bad though. Uh, and if this doesn't pan out, then we will uh, we will go over to that. There's another spot over there that looks pretty good too. So we'll check this for about 10 minutes. Get some water in me. Switch over here. I think this one might be a tiny bit shallower. This might not be quite the deal. On this lake, usually I find that there's just a couple of little key spots that hold them. This is not that big of a lake. And they always, the key spots always seem to change just a little bit. So I don't know exactly what we're getting into here. We're gonna try our best though to find out. It's a little bit of an edge right here. It drops off, you can see that there's a little channel and there's kind of what we're looking for right there. Maybe slightly. Let me stop my. Sometimes, if your transducer server does this, guys, sometimes my uh, stop transmit, start transmit. Sometimes your transducer can get a little bit wonky. It'll start like swinging on you if you have one of these older <laughs> live scope transducers so if you stop transmission and start it sometimes that'll fix that a little bit but anyway so let's uh let's get up here and see make sure you guys are all good okay we're good so we're gonna try see if we can find the same deal we just were on see if we see any fish out here it's kind of that same little deal there's a grass there's not as much grass but there's definitely that drop off is that a fish right there hard to tell No, keep going. We're just gonna look through here. If we don't find anything that's super interesting, we can always just get out of here and run across the lake. I'm not gonna waste time on a spot that doesn't set up like what we need. I'm not gonna make a ton of casts on the spot either. Waste time. There's one right there. Oh, 
it's not anything. Okay. And I'm not seeing as much here. I'm not over to my waypoint yet that I marked though. So we're gonna speed up just a tiny bit to get over there. I thought maybe I could just kind of scan this edge and find something, but oh, there's one. That's a decent one. Oh, he's coming to it. Eat it, fish. There he is. Eat it. Oh, he came over to it. Why didn't you eat it, fish? What are you doing to me? He, came, he got real interested in it and then swam away. Kind of the deal we're looking for slightly. It's a little bit different, but. Let's see, let's see. I'm trying to get the glare off my screen. I can actually see this deal. Okay, that was, he was not interested. Keep working our way down this though. There is a pretty hard edge right here, which looks kind of interesting. Second edge in there, that's really weird. One right there. There's one fish that kind of was interested there for a second, but there's another one. Just swim down to the bottom. Right in here. That's my bait. It's around him. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, there's three fish right there. Am I gonna get on them? There's three fish. Those fish are very interested in my bait. They went down to the bottom to look at it.
None of them actually ate it though. I don't know what those are. I don't know what those are bass or if those are carp or what they are. One more cast over there and then we're gonna roll actually to this other area because I think we can get bit. It matches the first area I was in. That's the nice thing about knowing a lake. Once you kind of know what the fish are doing, you can start duplicating it. But you gotta get a sense first. And like, I didn't know at all what these fish were doing when I got to the lake. And I caught them in an area I've never really caught them before, which is kind of weird. Um, but now that you kind of get a sense for what's happening and you get a couple bites, you can then start expanding and going to areas that you know and hopefully catch more fish. That's kind of the, the idea with it. There are several fish right there. I just don't know what those are. My bait went right through them twice. They're pretty big. I just don't know what those are. Anyway, let's roll. I'm gonna idle for a bit. Get across the lake. When we do that, I'll talk to you guys. Have a nice little chat that we idle over. Okay, so what have we learned today? Well, first thing we learned is that these fish are using the outside edge of the grass. They're in about 10 to 15 feet. They wanna be by a sharp edge of the grass with hard bottom, like a hard ledge with grass on top. They're not all the way out super deep out in the middle of the lake yet. They're kind of just transitioning out, which is interesting. Um, we have only got bit on one spot, so they're not everywhere. Uh, I suck at landing four pounders, apparently. We've learned that. Normally not the case, but it's okay. Um, and fishing is hard. We've also learned that today. I'm actually doing pretty well, I would feel like, considering it's 10 o'clock in the middle of the summer. These fish are kind of acting weird. But this is normal, this is fishing. I mean, honestly, I've only been out here for like two hours. Maybe, I don't even know how long I've been out here. Let's just say two hours. I have a two and a quarter and like a three and a half to four pounder that jumped off. So, not too bad, given a fishing day. If I was fishing for eight hours and I was doing a tournament, we be feeling pretty good right now. Even though I jumped off that good one, I still feel be feeling pretty good because I'm getting a bite per hour, even though it's just off that same spot. But I would still be experimenting, even if this was a tournament day. I mean, I would be checking new water, trying to find similar stuff, because you can't, you, I could potentially milk that spot over there for five good ones, and that might happen uh, if I was out here for eight hours. But these fish, a lot of times, you need to let them rest and reposition. That's a big key a lot of times out here. You can't just, a lot of times get out on the lake and just start smashing them, you know, on one spot for eight hours straight. It's catch a couple fish off a spot, leave, let them reposition. If it's possible to leave, if there's not a bunch of other guys who are trying to fish your stuff. And even if guys are trying to fish your stuff, it's not that big of a deal. Um, a lot of times with this, you can, um, you can leave these areas because guys aren't gonna be fishing in the exact same way. I don't know how many guys would be fishing the spot I'm trying to fish with a hover rig or like a drop shot probably could catch these fish potentially too. Uh, but I don't know how many guys would be fishing it exactly how I'm doing it, trying to target those fish on the isolated key little drop off, stuff like that. They might just come through the area and just fan cast it. And that's not going to get it done most of the time. So let other guys fish through areas, not a problem. Come back, let those fish rest on the key little deals that you're trying to target and just dial in on them. And uh, a lot of times you can catch good fish doing that. So that's kind of the, that's the game plan today. And uh, just gonna, here we go. It's the game plan today. I don't know if we're gonna succeed in catching them over here. If we can get a fish or two over here though and expand it to two areas, then you can basically spend like 30, 45 minutes on one area, go back, fish 45, 45 minutes to an hour on the other area and hop back and forth. This was like a normal you know, eight hour fishing day. It's not going to be, cause I'm not gonna be out here that long. But um, that's kind of the deal. Now with this spot coming up, we have a uh, same little deal, I think, at least, I hope, uh, where you have a sharper drop off that should have some grass growing on the outside edge. Uh, not 100% positive that's going to be the case, 
but I'm pretty sure. So uh, I'm gonna graph this first with side imaging just to double check. And basically what we have is, uh, I don't even know what's out here, like some random rubble and stuff when they built this lake. And right when you get into this little corner, there's a hard edge, a hard cut into the bank. There's some brush out here too, but I think those are just crappie that are out here. They look pretty small. So we got a few fish like in brush, but that's not really what we're looking for. What we're looking for is I think what we're about to come up to right now, which is, yeah, there it is. See that little hard edge? There's actually a couple of fish. You can see them on the 2D. That's crazy. You actually see those fish we're going to be targeting. There's that hard edge on the side imaging. And I'm going to mark that little deal. And you can see it cuts really sharp in there. And it kind of, there's multiple little edges right there. There's a really nice hard edge there that we, those fish could sit up on to the right, to the left. There's some brush out here. But what really was interesting is this right here. We scroll back. That's what I'm looking for in terms of fish. Right on that grassy, like drop, right? Uh, oh shoot, let's get back here. Right, uh, right there, there's a handful of fish. We're gonna mark that. Uh, and I'll show you guys here in a second. So right, like there, there's that like five foot, and then there's that, and it drops off into 20, and there's a couple of fish are set up right there. Same thing on the 2D, you can see that fish right there. And then there was on the side view, there's all kinds of good stuff in there. So we have this hard edge right here, it has grass all up on top of it. This has grass right here and there's a hard edge right there, that whole thing right there. That's kind of what we're looking at. That looks sweet. I mean, that's that hard edge. If you couldn't see it because my face is covering it up, there's that hard edge right there. I mean, we are on it. So uh, I'm gonna mark this real quick just to make sure I don't run over the top of this. And then we're going to pull up the map. I have some of this stuff marked already from past trips, but we got that whole thing marked up pretty solid. So we're gonna make our way up here. And we already see fish down there. So we know they're down there. We just need to put them in the boat. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Make it sound so easy. But as you can see, it helps to uh, graph with your electronics before you fish stuff. And I mean, normally it doesn't bother these fish too much. If I graph them like this, I mean, I probably could catch them better if I just pulled up and just started throwing. But the problem with just pulling up and starting throwing, I don't know how fishing line does this, guys. It just gets, always finds a way to get wrapped up. But uh, the problem with just getting up and throwing is that you don't know if there's fish there or not. And if you don't know if there's fish in the spot or not, makes it very difficult to uh, trust, you know, well for me at least, it just it feels like I'm wasting my time if I don't know there's something down there. So I really like knowing that there are fish down in an area before I just start randomly casting. It's just me though, if you guys like to just randomly start throwing, go for it, but that's really, really not my style. I like knowing I'm around them. Oh, look at those fish right there. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Some freaking goods right there. down there where they all go. The heck? What the heck? Where'd they go? You got too close to them? I don't know. They're right there too, though. Looks like they're up there chasing bait or something. Oh, gosh, come on. 
like that. Back off slightly. Dang, one hit it pretty good too. There, just chilling. There's a bunch of you. Those don't all look like bass, but that's a good one right there. Mm. It's like several, there's several fish right there that look pretty good right on that break where we graft. Got him. Stay on their fish. Not a big one, but it is a keeper. Or is a fish. Very small actually. He had that thing choked. My goodness, fish. Think you wanted that hover rig? Not a big one, but I think the pliers for you, bud. He had that thing longer than I thought, maybe. Oh no, fish. Okay, I'm gonna have to cut this. I'm gonna grab the plastic out of here. Kinda swallowed that thing. There's a good one down there too with them. I'm just gonna get all this plastic out and then I'm gonna See if I can get the hook out of him. If not, I'm just gonna cut it and let him let him take it. He really wanted that hover. Come on, fish. There it is. Sorry to take your meal from you. But okay, yeah, I got him a little bit deep, so we're gonna cut that so that he can just digest that, but I wanted to get all the plastic out of him. So otherwise I'm gonna kill him if I try to get that out. Just a little guy. Okay, let's get re-rigged real quick, because there are more fish there. And another hover. So that worked out. Got another fish. There's some good ones around this area and kind of just ran the pattern. This spot here, I knew about just because of history on the lake. So having history on the lake is not a bad thing, guys, by any means. What I will say, though, is that you don't want to be a prisoner of your history. That's something I see happen to a lot of guys. They will, um, they'll get so caught up on, hey, I've caught him here in the past, or I've caught him doing this this time of year, or whatever. Like, if you would ask me, and you had to say, okay, Johnny, what do you expect? If I had to bet $100 on what I was going to catch my fish doing today, I would have said, oh, I'm gonna catch him fishing brush piles with a big worm or something like that. Just cause that's how I've caught him here this time of year before. And it's how I like to fish out here. And if I had gone and done that today, I may have zeroed. And that would have been very embarrassing cause you know, you don't want to zero on camera on these lives. And my plan is just post all these lives I do, even if I do zero, because that's part of it. And I'm gonna try to put one of these up every single week. I can go to the lake and film and just make this type of content for you. Hero or zero, I wanna do them live as much as I can. Just on some of these lakes, you don't get good cell service. And there's only so many lakes I have in my area. So I can't just go to the same creek on beaver every single week and do that. So I'm gonna try to give you guys a diversity of lakes for these too. And whenever I can live stream with internet allowing, I will do it. And then otherwise we're just gonna chill and do these videos. Cause most of you guys are watching it back afterwards 
after the fact anyways, so having it live isn't really mandatory. But uh, let's get this little hover rig back going. Again, this is the eighth ounce core tackle hover rig, the Strike King Caffeine Chad. You saw me throw up my last uncut. It was working and it's working in this video and it's a completely different lake and scenario, but because these fish are just chilling and it's, they're wanting to, they're wanting something subtle, this is the deal. We're gonna try to get back over there. Multiple fish over there. Uh oh, let's do that. Oh, golly. Come on, fish. Eat it. Fish are smaller than the other ones I was fishing for earlier. Oh, there's a better ish one. Eat that thing. That's a good one. Eat a fish. Come on. Oh, man. You see that one there? That one, though, it's a 30 feet. It's a lot better fish. It has a bigger return to it. He just shot straight to the bottom right when my bait hit the water. He did not like that. Seems kind of skittish. You're not be able to get that one to bite. So I caught that first fish, and it looks like it kind of moved that school around. They're real set up nice and tight. Now they're kind of not. There's that good one right there, though. I'm going to try to see if I can just hover this thing over his head. Because, I mean, that's a freaking good one. If I can get that specific fish to eat my bait. I just don't know if I can. Oh, golly. Come on, fish. Man. Ah, I took my tail. Get another fluke on here. Okay, well, we're getting around them. I think there's some little guys that are jacking with me up there, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna try to work around the edge of this in a second. Because I wanna try to target some of these better quality fish, but there's a little wad of them like right there. I can see them kind of busting on the surface. It's real shallow up there. I don't know exactly, got them. I don't know what these little jokers are doing up there, but there's a pile of them. Tearing up my baits, fish. I'm gonna have to switch to something else here in a second because I don't have any more of these deals. Little guy. Hover rig gets bit. These caffeine shads are very soft and salty. I like that about them, but you go through quite a few. I will say that. I can just switch color. I do have other colors of this, so I guess I can just go to a different color if need be. More of like a bluegill pattern. Yeah, the hover rig is not a hard bait to fish, guys. You just literally cast it out, let it sink for a bit, twitch it, and they just eat it. Oh my gosh, they're busting up there real. There's a fish that's busted way up shallow up there. What in the world? That was weird. Man, the 
Look at all those fish right there. There's a straight up pile of them. And 40 foot, you can kind of see them. They're not very big though. You can kind of see the returns are small, but there's a freaking pile of fish. Coming through them, but not really wanting to well, a couple of fish ate it, a couple of small ones. Okay, so we're gonna now move over here. We're gonna kind of keep this rolling. So there's another edge that's right over here. And basically what I'm gonna try to do, actually before I do that, let me, I'm gonna stop this recording for a second and start it because we're about 30 minutes into this one, just to make sure we're good. Okay, we're good. Let's keep rolling. So there's another little hard edge right here see if there's better quality fish anywhere up and down this edge. Somewhere around this edge, there's a little bit deeper, deeper deal. I don't know exactly where it is. But it cuts in here just slightly, slightly deeper. Ooh, there's something right there. I don't know what that is. Looks like it's just some grass, but there might be a fish or two. Ooh, there's several fish actually with that. Those are fish. Come on. I see you right there, fish. Why are you doing this to me? Over that thing right over this deal. I don't see any big ones down there though. Might be our problem. See if there's anything out here. Nothing out there. Let's see here. There's a bunch of floating stuff in the water around here. I think that's a lot of these little particles and stuff you're seeing. It looks like it might be fish, but it's just actually uh, floating debris. So there are fish. Really, the way you're going to identify if it's fish out here is if it starts moving, like the debris starts moving. That's how I'm identifying most of the stuff. When you're when I say, oh, I saw a fish, it's just because I see one of the dots that's on the screen move. That's basically my only real good indicator. I'm dropping it on one's head right now. Come on, fish, eat it. Right there. What are you doing? Fish are lazy today. No one wants it though. They come and just, they come on and get all over it. It's just, there's not that many that want to do that. Let's see if I can see any more over here. Otherwise, we're probably going to have to take a beeline back to our spot where we've been catching the better quality fish. The looks of things. Unless we can try to find one more little stretch. Cover this whole lake by the time this day's over. Let's see here. No, I'm interested actually. I'm gonna go. There's a. Uh, I didn't graph it, but there's another little deal around. There's like a hump that runs out here. I'm gonna try to graph around this, just see for a second, and then 
I may go back to the spot where I just caught that, where I caught the good one earlier and try that. And maybe end our day on that. 11 o'clock, been out here for who knows how long, probably two and a half hours. Caught some fish, showed you guys some stuff. Not had as much success as I was hoping, but we didn't do too, we haven't been done too bad. At least by my standards, I don't know who, about regular YouTube standards where guys are catching fish every single cast, but for my standards, I'm feeling I'm doing pretty well, to be honest. That's a good one right there. Drop my bait on them. Not interested. Thing about these uncut formats, guys, is I'm going to show you these days too, and I just catch a couple fish. I'll show you the days when I smash them. But I'm not just going to come out here and post the days when I catch 20 fish in 20 minutes and it looks, you know, st stupid easy. And it's like, man, Johnny's a wizard. It's not really the goal with these videos. I could do that. I could just post these every time I come out and catch a 30 pound bag in 30 minutes, but that doesn't really help anybody, in my opinion, because. It's just not reality. It's just not what fishing is actually about. It's not how it works. I mean, it might work that way if you're on certain lakes and cert doing certain deals, but or if you know where the fish are ahead of time. But just coming out here blind, it's not that easy to just come out here and just catch them. Even though I know this lake really well, I mean, I've been here many times. I've filmed many a video out here, but it's not. It's still not easy. Still have to figure it out. Okay, what do we got here? It's a bunch of stuff out here. I'm just looking at the screen. I mean, I'm, I'm not. The reason I'm not casting is because I'm seeing a lot of like random sticks and brush and stuff. It's kind of interesting, but I'm not really seeing any better quality dots or arches. There's just a lot of stuff going on around here and fish keep busting way back in there, which is very weird too. And if I had any shallow rods rigged up, I'd go sling something up there like a frog, but I don't. So I don't even have a braid rod rigged up. So we're just going to keep doing this. We got a four and four or a three and a half to four pounder already in the boat. We know that there's quality fish that are out here. It's just a matter of figuring out the right little deal, right little cast or spot or something these fish are on. And finding those things is not easy. It's like there's some random fish just around out here, but nothing, nothing looks good. Just a bunch of little fish. Actually one better one right there. Where'd you go? He disappeared. Okay, there's another little like hump thing over here. We're gonna check this. There's a, runs in the middle of this pocket. We're gonna see if I can catch one there or see one there, not catch one, but even just see one. If we don't see anything there, then we're gonna roll, hit that spot where we caught our, or had our two fish bite our two quality fish, fish that for a little bit longer. We'll probably call it a stream because I don't have too much more to check. I mean, I keep checking spots, I keep graphing. I'm sure there's two or three more little deals out here that have them, but that's not really the point of this. You guys have seen the process of how I found these. And, uh, you know, at that point, it would just be gratuitous me just going and finding the same thing, doing the exact same thing over and over again. And, well, that might be Interesting for some people. I'm sure for most people that's not exactly what everyone wants to watch. But I will be doing this on other lakes. I'm thinking next week if I can make it out, I'm gonna try to go fish a new lake I've never been to before and show you how I break that down. I think that could be kind of fun. It's a little drop off right here. Interesting. 
But yeah, go to a brand new lake I've never been to and show you how I break that down. Maybe that'll go well, maybe it won't go well. Either way, I'm gonna post the video about it <laughs> so you guys can see. What's that right there? We're just gonna try to keep it real on here. And uh, show you what it's actually like. That's the goal. Where's my bait? I don't even know. I see much going on around here though. Let's check out this point. Every time I've just fished stuff so far today, just so you guys know, not caught any. <laughs> when I graph it first and check it out, I have caught them. When I see them on the graph, every fish, every spot where I've caught a fish, I've seen them on the 2D sonar or the side imaging or down imaging before I've caught any of them. So that just goes to show the power of using your traditional electronics and not just getting caught up in live scoping because you can spend a lot of time doing what I'm doing right now, which is just literally wasting time scoping around. And it, you can waste your whole day away doing it, to be honest. So I try to avoid that as much as possible. I'm gonna switch here. There we go. So we're gonna go back to where we uh, started the day. I'll put my uh, combo on just so we can see or graphing, but uh, but yeah, I mean, moral of the story today, guys, I needed to see the fish to be able to catch them on the graph, on 2D, or on side imaging, and once I found them, caught them okay, uh, only found two spots that really have had them, but that's pretty typical, you're not going to catch them on every spot in the lake. We haven't been out here for long, so if I spent another, I don't know, four, five, six hours out here, I mean, there's more spots over here and, and probably stuff I haven't graphed yet that I could drive around and I could probably find a couple more spots that have some fish, most likely, if I really put my head down and, and grind it out here. But that's not really the goal today, is to grind out every, to find every single spot on this little lake that's holding fish. It's to show you guys the process. That's uh, if I was doing a tournament or whatever out here, yeah, you want to know where every little nook and cranny is that's holding them. But also, if you're in a tournament, there's a good chance that those fish I'm catching right now won't be there. And even when I was fishing tournaments back in the day, I would graph just like I do my exact same process I'm doing now, tournament day. I graph all the spots, I make sure the fish are still there, I see how they're positioned. If I'm not seeing fish, I just don't fish it, even if I found them there in practice. This is my process every day I go to the lake. I don't change what I'm doing just because I have spots found or whatever. I do this exact same process every single time. And it's very consistent for me. It works out really well. And I think that that's the thing that is really helpful to have in fishing is have a process, something that you've had success with that's repeatable, that you can find success with on multiple bodies of water in multiple conditions. And my process of graphing spots before I fish them seeing the fish, figuring out how to get them to bite, keeping my mind open and fishing the moment every single day and not having a too many preconceived notions, that is key for me whenever I'm out in the lake. If I'm not, if I'm fishing just spots that I feel like I caught fish on in the past or that I caught fish on last week, I almost always suck. Like 98% of the time I suck. When I do what I'm doing today, usually it works out and I start catching some good fish. Now it does take longer and it's a little bit scary because usually I don't get on the deal, especially when I'm making like a YouTube video. Usually it takes me four, five, six hours to really get it dialed in. And like when I'm doing these videos like I am today where I'm only fishing for, I don't know, two and a half, three hours, it's pretty tough to, uh, to get on them because you're basically finding them day of, finding them in the moment and you're not gonna catch nearly as many fish right off the bat, but over an eight hour period, it can happen. It can happen really well too. Let me uh, switch over here, switch 
this for you. Okay. And yeah, we're back where we called them earlier. We're gonna chill through here for a bit. Fire out here. There's some fish, I think, up in this grass up in front of me too. I mean, I'm not gonna say you can't catch them up shallow up here, because I'm, I'm pretty sure you could probably get a, a bite or two up shallow. I'm really bummed that I did, I remember I missed that fish on that prototype hover too, heavier hook hover. That was a freaking good one. I missed them. Uh, and it was same exact little deal where I had the four earlier. So I think I've had two really good bites. One I saw, one I didn't, and then the two and two and a quarter pounder I caught. So uh, there's definitely some fish in this area, some decent ones. And I'm thinking that if I really wanted to have a good day, maximize this spot, find one more spot just like it somewhere that has these same quality fish on it, and you would be in business. Also feels like these fish are further out here. I think I'm getting too tied into this grass edge. I think that they're more, because there's like a little like ditch that runs through here. And I'm getting too caught up on fishing that, around that grass edge. I think I need to be fishing more kind of out here in front of it on that second little indention that I saw, that second lip. I don't know if that makes any sense. I have it pictured in my head from when we graphed it earlier. That's another thing that's nice about graphing the side imaging is you kind of can build a mental image of what the spot looks like. And I have that in my head right now of where we are and like in relation to the boat and everything. It's probably hard for you guys to get that picture, but that's another skill to develop when you're out here is building that mental image of an area so you can figure out where you need to be casting, where you need to be looking with live scope or just casting in general. And uh, having like a 3D mental map of the spot in your head can be very, very useful. Just scoping around here trying to find Big one. Not seeing anybody at the moment. Well, I only fish for like three hours, two nowadays, because my neck would be freaking sore. I need to get one of those mounts that like sticks up. If anyone knows anybody at a company that makes those mounts, stick up, have them give me a call. I like to try one of those and I can talk about them on the channel or whatever, do some promotion. Uh, I'd like to try one. I used to do a review to see if they're any better. What I'm doing here, because my neck hurts from this after doing it for a couple hours. <laughs> this isn't actually my favorite way to fish, but right now it's the most effective, so. Ooh, what is that? It's like a ball of bait. The fry or something down? It's not fry. It's something else. I don't know what that is. Let's fire a bait down there and see what it might be. I don't know what that is. It's bait or something. There's not many fish on this spot, I will say. There's just, I saw a few on the side imaging. They happen to be better quality fish. So it's not like I'm out here on a spot that's like loaded with big ones. I'm just maximizing the small area I have. It's kind of the deal today. Because as much as I'm scrapping around here, I mean, I'm barely seeing any fish. Those are fish, right? I think those are fish. 40 feet out, 30 feet out. Bait's going down to them, we're about to find out. Hmm. Well, I'm seeing basically nothing now out here, which is so weird. I 
Oh, these fish pushed up towards the edge more? Or if they pulled out more? I have no idea what's happening. I mean, I see fish busting up around that grass edge. Came up really high in the water column. He's just sitting there. What is he doing? I fired off that rock, and now he's just sitting in like 40 feet away from the boat. He's just sitting there. What in the world? What's that fish doing? He's just swimming back down to the bottom. Okay, that was weird. Okay, well, we don't know what's happening with these fish. Uh, I don't know if I could just catch him, like throwing a frog up there or something. I don't really know what's going on, to be honest. Those shallow water fish. I don't know where these fish would have gone. I would think that more fish would be pulling out here versus less. There's a fish. But apparently, I don't know what I'm doing. So, it's not a big shock, to be honest, to me. There's, there is fish right there. Eat a fish. Oh, come on. You're both right there. They reacted to it too. Those were bass. They're just like chilling in the center of this thing. It's very weird. Drop that right in his head. You can eat that fish. Nope. Not even interested. Should pull tighter up to this edge, like right on the edge right now. Seems like. Man, look at them! They're right, right there. Those are those fish. That fish is right there. That's like right in the middle of the water column, right there. Thirty feet out. That's the fish I was. Those are the fish I was catching earlier. And they're just, they're just sitting out here. I don't know what to do about that. Cause like before when I was catching them, they were up on the edge. They at least were sitting on the lip of something. It made them a lot easier to catch. Now they're just kind of randomly sitting out in the middle, which makes them much more difficult to catch. And yeah, it's just a timing deal. I'm, I'm sure at some point they're gonna slide back up if I come here, back here. But I mean, there's not a lot of fish out here. There's a handful, you know, 10, five, 10, 15 fish, maybe max. I'm being generous, and I mean, they're good ones, but they're just sitting in this like one little deal, and uh, they're right here, and it's very interesting. There's one that's up there, 
So you can eat my bait if I bring it by him. If I even made the right cast. No, I'm not really having much to say. I mean, I've been talking for two and a half hours straight, so I kind of ran out of stuff to talk about, to be honest, guys. At this point in the video, I'm just trying to fish, trying to catch one. Can't always just talk all the time. You just run out of stuff to say, unfortunately. There's my bait. Okay, bring it, bring it right by this fish. You interested in that fish? Not even slightly? Okay, cool. What about your buddy over here who's right underneath the boat for some reason? Are you interested, fish? On the hover, it looks so good. Just eat it. Are you following it down to the bottom or are you running away from it? I can't tell. He's running away from it. Classic. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know, guys. I, I don't really have much more to do out here. There's a few fish potentially up and down this grass line. Maybe if I, like, picked up a flipping stick, I could even, like, flip in here if this was a channel where we did that. But we don't do that here. So, anyways, maybe that's something we could do. But, yeah, we're... We're kind of out of options. There's a handful of fish just kind of randomly scattered around out here. Maybe I'll keep just going on this grass line for just a second. I haven't really seen much though that makes me think I can just kind of randomly run down these grass lines. I really do need to see those fish on the graph first. There's one. I am not seeing uh, great activity around here at all. I mean, I probably probably should just keep graphing if I was gonna wanna keep it rolling, but I feel pretty good about today. Let me switch this camera view real quick. There we go. Awesome, okay guys, well, I had a blast today showing you guys how I was catching out here on the small little lake. Uh, and we didn't end up catching really any good ones other than that one that jumped off. But this is how it usually goes for me on the lake. I had a you know, three and a half to four pounder, or a two pounder, some smaller fish. Only was out here for you know, two, three hours. If I was out here for eight full hours, I think I probably could keep hunting and pecking around, put a few more good fish in the boat, and that would be my video. And if this was a normal fishing moment video, I would just cut in all those great parts, show, oh, look, they look like this on the graph. I fired out their first cast with the live scope, put them in the boat. It's not how it goes. That's not how it goes for literally anybody that I know. And you might think that it's the case, especially when you watch these guys on the Elite Series and things like that. But again, remember, they're out here fishing and graphing and practicing for three to four days sometimes before these tournaments, before they actually get out there to fish. So they know what's going on in the lake. They've figured some stuff out. When you come out here cold, no idea what's going on, and just start fishing, it's not nearly that simple. So you need to use some of the techniques that I employed in this video to get on fish as fast as possible, and then just have patience and enjoy the process. Have fun. Pick up a core tackle hover rig. This is the eighth ounce size with a three out hook. Put a Strike King Caffeine Chad Jr. on there, and you're going to put some good fish in the boat. I was throwing that day, guys, in a Denali seven foot four medium heavy power multi-purpose spinning rod lithium pro model with a denali uh, fission reel spinning reel i'm throwing that with 12 pound sunline fc sniper or a 12 pound sunline braided line with eight pound sunline fc sniper leader line and huge shout out again to bridgeford foods for sponsoring these fish the moment uncut videos 
Huge shout out to Bridge Food for making these videos possible and also for providing us with some great snacks for the boat. Check out Bridge Food over at your local gas stations, tackle shops, uh, dollar stores, anywhere you can find Bridge Food. Definitely get it on the way to the lake. And that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below letting, letting me know what other type of uncut videos you'd like to see. Or, or <coughs> oh, oh, almost died there, choking. We're gonna try to go out uh, next week to a brand new lake and go out, show you the whole process of breaking down the body of water I've never been to before. And we're also gonna try to do some of these videos live, hopefully, if we can get good cell reception on a few of these lakes. So I'm gonna stop talking. I've been talking for like three hours straight. I have nothing left to say other than hopefully you guys have the best luck on the water. We'll see you guys in the next video.